Hey everyone, thanks for learning to play games. My name is Lance, and in today's video, I am. this is a complimentary video that's going to go along with Zombicide Undead or Alive. As that video, the teaching video for it, has been pretty long. There's a lot of new things that they were included in this or clarifications that needed to be done. And I didn't want to make the video too long, so I figured I'd add this video as a secondary option as the things that I'm going to cover in this one are fairly straightforward in the rule book, but for those of you that want to have this laid out, I figured I'd throw this one out. So in this video, I'm going to be covering a couple of other things. Now again, now if you're looking for the full teaching video, I'll have a link up in the top corner there and in the description down below to the teaching video for Undead or Alive that will cover all the rest of the things. So in this video, I'm going to be covering more detail about each one of the four main classes in the core game. So I'll go over each one of those and show examples of how those work. I'm also going to cover in this video the companions, as you will use those every once in a while, but it's not something that's used a lot. And then I'm also going to cover Ultra Red Mode for those of you that want to play extended games and really want to see how far you can take your survivors and how many different abilities you can unlock. So I'm going to cover all of those in this video. As always, if you find my videos helpful, if you like what I do, please consider that like button and subscribe to my channel. So with these ways you can support channels like mine so we continue to grow and be able to produce this content. Also consider sharing and liking the video as it really does help with the algorithm. And if you have any other requests, or I also am considering doing a video, a teaching video for the expansion for this one, covering the brand new engineer class, let me know in the comments down below if that's something you'd like to see. So let's go ahead and head to the table and I'll teach you how to play. Next, I want to go over the different class abilities real quick. So the first one I want to look at are Gunslingers who have Fanning, which if you ever forget what it does, it is referenced on the back of the player card as you can see here. So with Fanning, it is going to allow you to choose one of your pistols you have equipped to perform a Fanning attack. With a Fanning attack, it is going to modify the number of dice you roll and your attack's target value. Now, some weapons, such as the Old Timer, will modify that as well, making it even worse in that situation, as the Old Timer is not a very good weapon. But with this, let's go ahead and say that she is going to use the Old Timer in this attack, and so she's going to choose this zone with this attack. With it, it's going to still follow the weapon's range. You're going to instead roll six dice, and you're going to need fives or better based on the fanning results, or in the situation of the Old Timer, it will modify it to sixes only instead of fives. So I'll go ahead and roll, and then for each six that you roll, you're going to do damage as normal following that targeting priority that we already went over. So one of the walkers would be eliminated. Now the other important things with this is with fanning, it is going to cause a boom result instead, and it is also going to add reload to your weapon, which means that you have to spend an, an action to reload the weapon before you can perform another attack, including another fanning attack. The Brawler class is going to offer two important things. You're going to get an additional hit point, so all Brawlers are going to start with three hit points, and you're also going to have the Charge ability, which allows you to spend one action once per turn to move up to two spaces to a space containing zombies, and then you get to perform a free melee action. So in this example with Carl, he could move up to two spaces into a space that has zombies, and then perform a free melee action with one of the weapons equipped. So with the Tomahawk, he scored two hits, eliminating both of these zombies in that zone. Now, one important note with this is that you still have to follow all of the normal movement rules. So in this situation, he could move. He would. Mu he must stop in this space with this zombie. He could not continue moving on to the other space to attack the other zombies. But he would still get his free melee attack at that point. The Faithful class has two different abilities. First, the Faithful class can use water as if it is holy water, which is a huge ability for them. The other ability is the Valde Retro token. Once per turn, they can spend one action to place this token anywhere within line of sight of them. Once placed, during the zombie activation step, all zombies in that zone when they activate will remove the token and then they are going to lose all of their action points. So these zombies would not move during the zombie phase. Now one important note with this is after that, if these zombies got an extra activation by some other means, they would still get to take that extra activation. And the final class in the core game are the townsfolk. With townsfolk, they have two abilities as well. The first is that townsfolk can search any number of times during their turn. They are not limited to one search per turn, as long as they have the actions to spend. 
The other ability is the home defender ability, which allows them to see beyond one space in a building, as normally you can only see one space ahead of you in a building. But with the home defender, they can see any number of spaces in a straight line. So in this example, normally the survivors can only see into this room and they would not be able to see or target zombies in this room. But with Trixie, since she is a townsfolk, she can target zombies in this room, being able to use the Springfield rifle to target and attack them. So from here, the next thing I want to talk about are companions. And before getting into some of the other details, I want to go over what the general traits of companions are. So first off, a companion is a survivor. It means that the mission is going to be lost whenever a companion is eliminated. It can be hit by friendly fire and is eliminated upon receiving any wounds. You're always going to stay together with whatever the leader is. So a companion is going to have a leader, whichever character has that companion with them is considered that companion's leader and will always stay with that character. They're going to gain any benefits from that character's movement or anything like that. You can basically think of them as an item in that regard is they're always going to be with whatever character is the leader or leading them. They don't have an inventory and they don't take any actions on their own. So from there, let's get into more details about the companions themselves. So companions are going to show up throughout the game, either in certain scenarios, they will start on the board and then players can move to them and pick them up. Or if you choose to play with less survivors, you can complement those some of those survivors with companions. For example, let's go ahead and say that I'm playing a four player game and each player only wants to control one of the survivors. In that situation, you can choose two of the players to gain a companion each where you're going to gain their card and you're simply going to gain the ability on the back of that card for that companion. Companions can be traded from one survivor to another, giving that new survivor that ability. And one thing with the brawler class, you are not going to gain the additional hit point. You're simply going to gain that charge ability. So let's look at an example of this. For example, let's go ahead and say that it is Thomas's turn. He is four actions and this particular scenario has Carl in there as a survivor or a companion. So let's go ahead and spend three actions to move into his space. And then the final action that I can spend as I have four actions is the rally action, which allows me to gain this companion. When that happens, then I will gain that companion's card and place it somewhere next to my board. At this point, from this point on, as long as I have that companion, I have the charge ability on top of my faithful ability with Thomas. There's a couple other important notes with this. So first off, when a companion starts a scenario, for example, with Carl, if he started this scenario, so let's go ahead and take these off real quick, he would not trigger this corpse pile. So I would not place a spawn point there because a companion's there. It's only when the first survivor moves in there that that would be placed and then be active. The other optional mode that you can include is the ultra red mode. And with this mode, this allows you to go beyond red level. There are three additional dynamite tokens that you can place in your area at the beginning during setup as well, if you're going to choose to play this mode. From there with this mode, this allows you to gain additional abilities beyond red. So what happens with that? So let's go ahead and say, for example, that Thomas, it's Thomas's turn and he's going to take a shot with his Winchester and he ends up rolling two successful hits, which would eliminate two zombies, giving him two adrenaline points. The first point puts him into red. So now he would choose a free act or one of these actions to gain permanently. So let's say he takes another combat action. In the normal game, that would end the amount of adrenaline points that he could gain. But in ultra red mode, this is going to immediately kick all the way back down and then he would gain any additional points that he had received during that action. From there, then it's going to continue climbing and the next time it reaches orange, then Thomas is going to gain the other ability that he had. When it goes to red again, he will choose one of those two abilities to gain and it'll kick back and this is going to continue going. Now, when Thomas reaches orange again, now that both orange abilities have been selected already, he can choose any ability in the book to gain and then he'll go to red and gain that final ability. At this point, any time he continues from there, he would gain a new ability of his choice from the rule book, any ability that he wants. And this mode basically lets you just continue going and seeing how insane your survivors can get with their abilities. Well, I hope you found that video helpful and learning a little bit more about some of these other modes and how the survivors work.
For those of you that have watched to this point, I really do appreciate it and I have a little bit of a surprise for you. I will have another video coming using this really cool 3D train that I was able to print out and I'm still working on it so it's not complete yet. There'll be wheels and all that on these but there's some really cool stuff with this and these files are free. I will have those in the link down below for those of you that have had a chance to check this video out. I will have that playthrough video coming shortly for that as that is a really cool little model that the community has made and it thank you for whoever did that it's really cool as always if you find my videos helpful if you like what i do please consider that like button subscribe to my channel it's one of the easiest ways you can support channels like mine so we can continue to grow build and produce this content please post any questions you have down in the comment section below and i'll do my best to answer them and if you haven't had a chance to check out the full teaching video yet i'll have a link up into one of these corners here wherever the little videos pop up and until next time i'll see you later